Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This is a special video. Uh, I just wanted to reflect. Uh, it's been about 20 years I've been working in the video games industry and film industry. And I just wanted to kind of go through, I guess, memory lane, go through my, how I got into the industry and where I am now. And if you stay to the end, I'll talk about my new job that I'll be starting in what's today. Today is 14th uh, August. I'll be starting that in September, start of September. I can go through that as well. And uh, and yeah, just a journey and uh, just my experiences. I thought I'd just share that with you. So, yeah, if you would want to hear my story, everyone's got a story, right? Um, then yeah, stay tuned. Oh, and before I start, I just uh, to wanted to let you know that over 70% of you come here to uh, to watch the channel but don't subscribe so please go ahead and subscribe man support the channel you know it's growing i've got some few videos coming out on the four unreal uh implementing it into unreal and stuff so there's more of that to come but um more tutorials as always to come and tips and tricks and everything like that okay guys so without further ado let's dive in so where did i start i started the very first memory i had of animation was my dad got me the jungle book on vhs uh, when I was 14 and I watched this and I thought how are these people making this character move and have emotions you know it's amazing it just blew my mind I didn't know how they were doing this it was a mystery to me so then I did my GCSEs you know here in the UK which is when you're 16 you know a general certificate of school education after GCSEs I used to collect this edge magazine gaming magazine at the back they always used to have this 3D Studio Max training. And I always used to wonder, what is this 3D Studio Max? And I used to work uh, in the factory, packing CDs and stuff. And I met this other guy from South Africa. I remember him really well. And he was think he was uh, trying to break into the gaming industry. This was like when I was 16, you know, I used to work packing CDs and we just started chatting. I vaguely remember him and he had the same interests as me. And I mentioned Studio Max to him. And he goes, yeah, I'm trying to break in as well. It's really hard. So that's the first early kind of signs I met someone else who was interested in gaming. And then when I did my A-levels, um, sorry, gaming, working in the gaming industry, that is, sorry. And then when I started doing my A-levels, art and IT, uh, I managed to get a position at Teesside University. I didn't get the grades for Bournemouth because at the time it was the National Center of Compu Computer Animation, Bournemouth Uni. But I ended up going through clearing, right? And I got a position in Teesside, did a BA Creative Visualization, which is a fancy word for anim animation with programming, but really it was just computer animation. It just had a bit of visual basics you, wanted, you had to uh, learn. So I got a good degree. I got a 2-1 from Teesside, which got me the, a place in the Masters in Bournemouth. And I went to Bournemouth, met a lot of great people there, you know. One of my friends, uh, Tanya Fenton, she worked for Richard Williams on the Thief and the Cobbler film. And she knew uh, Richard Williams' daughter. And I'll talk more about how I met Richard Williams' daughter when I was working in the States, but I can get into that later on. And uh, she became a really close friend of mine. She was a 2D animator. And she's done a few kids' books as well, and I'll put links in the description at the end for that. So that was a good experience in terms of meeting people from different backgrounds, you know. And the Masters, we were using Softimars XSI, which has been completely discontinued now. And after I graduated from that, I didn't get a job for about, about just under a year. So what I did three months in... So when I graduated from my master's, I moved in with my mum and dad in London, West London, Hayes. And I just started working. My mum and dad were cool, you know, they were like, just, st they, they loved it that I was back home because I was out for four years, right? So they were like, you know, take your time, do what you've got to do, you know. And I just was working on my showroom. I was working on my short film. I was doing a lot of environment art. I was doing a lot of texturing. Then three months in, I thought, you know what, I've been applying for so many jobs. Back then you had to set, send DVDs. And I was applying and then I, I must have sent about 120, 130 DVDs and I only got like a few replies like you do. You know, same old replies, you know, thank you for your interest, but there's no spaces for me. I applied to a lot of companies in London, Studio AKA, Framestore, Rushes, uh, Clear. Uh, I wasn't getting any work, you know, Games Industries as well. And then I decided to work as a runner, just come in as a runner and... I worked for a company called Rushes. I was there for three months. I was basically doing voluntary work just to get connections. 
And as a runner in London, in Soho, in the post-production houses, basically most of the post-production houses, they work with each other. So I would pick up negatives from one company and another company would have the grading equipment. So they would grade the negatives and I'd drop off negatives there and then I would give them my showreel. I will say, look, if any work for an animator, please let me know. And they would appreciate that. They would see the effort being made there, you know, that I'm taking an initiative and trying to really make the opportunities count while being as a runner, you know. You just, you don't want to just be a runner and that's it. You want to really take those opportunities. You see, talk to the people in the companies who are, when I was at Rushes, there was people working on fire, smoke, all these post, post-production software, Houdini, and I would talk to them. I would say, do you have any connections in 3D animation? Do you know anyone that I can reach out to? You've got to use those opportunities, you know, and then you make those contacts. I got in touch with an agent and from uh, animated people. I don't know if that's still around now. And he got me an interview for, I believe it was Jagex in Cambridge. Yeah. But what happened was, so I was working free and it was about nine months in now. So I left after three months working free when I got that contact. Then I was living with my parents for about nine months. And then I had an, an interest from Climax also the agent with the Jagex we talked about. And I did the Jagex interview and I more or less got that job, but I made a rookie mistake. I said, oh, uh, there's another company interested, Climax. And I shouldn't have said that, but you know, I was very young. I didn't know, I was naive. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, the agent said, you know, you had the job, OP, you know, you just blew it. I go, I know, I know. Anyway, the Climax job didn't work out either. And I just applied for online to Ninja Theory as a crack, as an animator and I got invited in and the art director, great guy, Hughes at the time, amazing, amazing, talented artist. Uh, he said to me, can you come in as an environment artist? I said, but I want to animate. He said, look, um, he was honest with me. He said, look, you're not really good enough yet at that level, which when I was young, it kind of hurt me, but he was right. When you graduate, you think you know everything, but really you, you don't. When you're, when you're young, you think you know everything, but when you get older, you realize you don't know a whole lot of things. And I said, but I want to animate. And he said, look, come in for six months because he looked at my short film and he saw the architecture and, and model. And my heart wasn't in it though, but I could do it. My heart was in animation. But he, he promised, he said, look, come in for six months, then we're putting in with a designer, you can do uh, placeholder animations for gameplay with him. I said, okay. And he stuck to his word. I didn't mind environment. I, it was good. You know, it's a good skill to learn. But this is an example that if someone spots another talent in you and you're just starting off in the industry, go for it. Really go for it. And because you, that is the step you need. Once you're in, you're in. Then you just, it's just that one year's experience. Then all the doors will open. And I was lucky enough to work for Ninja Theory on their Heavenly Sword game, that opened up a lot of doors for me. So I was there for a year and a half. Uh, I got to junior animator there and then our contract ended, went to EA and I didn't really like it because that was a massive corporate company. And I was at a Ninja Theory, which is really independent. I worked on Harry Potter at EA. I wasn't really enjoying it, to be honest. And I got an opportunity. And when I was at EA, I started uh, Animation Mentor. And then six months since I got an opportunity, I moved back in with my parents and I got an opportunity to work in San Diego in California on LinkedIn. There was an agent, Karen Randaba, big up Karen, you know, and she, uh, she said, there's openings in San Diego. Would you like to try? I didn't think any of it. I could, I really, to be honest, I was just about understanding animating animation. I wasn't confident. I didn't really know how to animate properly. Uh, in, in some ways, I think I was just winging it at the early, early stages. And I was 25 at the time. This was in 2007. And I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm learning animation mentor. I'm starting to understand a little bit. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I didn't think that they would hire me. So two days later, I got a phone call and they said that they really, they liked your showreel. They want to hire you, uh, that they want to interview you, sorry. So I had a phone interview. And I think a lot of this is also, when I look back, is to do with timing. They were hiring a lot of people from Europe at the time. And what happened was we all passed the interview on the phone. They actually came to London Trafalgar to interview us, interview us face to face. So I went there, got interviewed. We all got the jobs. And Candice, who's a very good friend of mine now, 
uh, in, in San Diego. She, she was at High Moon Studios, which was the studio I got hired. And she welcomed me there and, you know, um, onboarded me and we, you know, settled in California. So she's a really good friend of mine. And um, we, all got the, we all got the jobs and she said that the visa has to pick you randomly. So two, you have to wait two weeks. So I waited two weeks and I got picked by the visa, H-1B visa. So the H-1B visa allows you to work in the States for three years. It's a special visa and you can extend it for another three years. But after that, unless you have a green card pending in the application, you can't extend it. You have to come back and apply for another H-1B and do it again. So maximum you can say three years. So I worked for High Moon Studios there. High Moon Studios had a big merger with Activism Blizzard. They laid off 150 people. I was one of them. Uh, luckily enough, within uh, eight weeks, I got picked up by another company, Tryon, and I worked on a game there. Sorry, at High Moon Studios, I worked on uh, the Born Conspiracy game and Dark Watch 2, which didn't get released. That was mainly mocap for High Moon Studios that I worked on Motion Builder. Then when I got laid off there, I went to Try Tryon, which is an MMO game called Rift. And when I look back at my the jobs I've had in the gaming industry, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I had a really good friends there, you know, uh, shout out to Dave Okers and Eli, you know, and Jason Rao, Peter Hahn, you know, Peter Hahn was a great artist, you know, he used to sit right next to me and I would just watch him draw and he would just, some of you might know Peter Hahn, you know, he does a lot of workshops, especially in the drawing community, he's amazing. And uh, I, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, game because every three, two, three weeks we get to work on a character. I would get a robot. I would get a mutant. I would get a space marine. I would get a zombie. And there's all these different characters you would get. And it was really fun to work on those, that, that game. Uh, but they had layoffs, you know, in January. So this was 2010. I came back. I decided to come back. There was an opportunity in Boston, which I really, I look back. I do regret that. You know, I should have taken that chance. The thing, was, the thing is, when you're on a visa in the States and you move to another com a company, you've got to stay there for a year. Then you can transfer and go back. That's the commitment you have to do. And I think back then when I was 20, I was 28 at the time, I wanted to stay West Coast. But I should have just thought a bit more openly and gone there for a year and then applied to come back. Uh, because when you're on a visa, it's, there's that pressure. You know, you need to get another job within three months. Otherwise, you know, you have to leave the country kind of thing. But that didn't work out, but I decided to come back, came back home, stayed with my parents for about four months. I was helping my dad out with the kitchen extension. I was doing a tiling, floor tiling. And then I got an opportunity in Liverpool to work on Motorstorm Apocalypse. Uh, it was environmental art uh, animation. And I just took the opportunity. I said, yeah, let's go. It's in Liverpool, it's somewhere different. You know, I stayed open to that relocation, moved there. I had a good friend of mine was a roommate, Chris Christopher Radsbury. He's a he's done really well. He's in Sweden now. I think he was leading and super massive leading all these companies around environment art, game development. He was doing and he he done really well. And uh, I I stayed at Motorola Pop Popclips for six months, and then Warner Brothers got in touch and they said, "Would you like to work for us? We need an animator for Lego games." And the Motorstorm Apocalypse was contract so I wanted and because I got laid off twice I, I had a bit of a doubt in the industry you know like are these is Sony gonna I know it was contract but it wasn't permanent and I ended up going to Warner Brothers and working on a series of Lego games 14 Lego games as you can see the trophies up there and um, yeah I stayed there because it was secure and they had this kind of a cycle where they would you know when you would when I first started that Lego, Warner Brothers, we worked on three games a year. It was a sweat box, you know? It was all about getting the games out, churning the games out. One thing, you know, there was a lot of crunch, but one thing about Lego was we knew how to get games out on the date, you know, just churn them out. Yes, it was a cash cow. Yes, the uh, they had this one computer technology that they used engine, and they knew each Lego game was a different franchise, you know, Lego Harry Potter, Lego Parts of the Caribbean, Lego Marvel. And they knew it's going to make money. So it was a bit of a cash cow like that. It was a bit of a rinse and repeat. But we are, we kind of, in those 11 years, I learned how to animate quickly at a good standard, you know, to get it in the game. And at the end, we would try and polish. So, you know, there's always something good that comes out of the bad, as they say, you know, the crunch and the, 
you know the over overwork i guess but um it taught me also to keep keep uh, your health in check you know you don't have to do all this overtime so it made me more aware of that and now as the last 10 years have gone on the game industry has become a bit more professional in terms of mental health and crunch culture is kind of it's still around you know because um you know, I was working at, when I was working at Tryon, there was an ex, ex Blizzard guy there. I won't say his name, but he said, you know, Blizzard was in a three year crunch and they forked out a lawsuit for 11 million. You know, EA spouse is a, is a perfect example where the spouse of a programmer uh, took EA to court and they forked out about 11, 12 million as well. So all these cases have kind of reevaluated the gaming industry to, you know, unions are being formed now and, you know, there's a bit more of a collectiveness, but there's still massive layoffs going as well, as you can see this year. And, but it's picking up slowly. But anyway, going, coming back to my, uh, experience in video games. Um, so I was at Warner Brothers, uh, Traveler's Tales for 11 years. And then, you know, there wasn't really much people, my, my peers and everyone, we weren't getting promoted this and that. I was getting senior animation roles. So I ended up leaving, went to Scopely, worked on, uh, Monopoly Go, which was the biggest selling uh, mobile games I think it was last year 2023 I was there for about 10 months um, I was lucky enough they flew me out to LA I got to meet my friends after 10 years we reunited Candice who was talking about a friend of mine uh, a few other friends I met so that was a nice little reunion but I worked for the company in Seville in Spain in Genjoy and we flew out there as well so it was a good 10 months experience was good you know, and then from there I moved on to Lava Labs, worked on Afar, Afar, and uh, you know that was very, to be honest, the the rig wasn't as good as I as I wanted it to be, as I asked it to be, but it's fine, you know that they had to work with their limitations. It was a startup, so I got an experience of how a startup company is. You know, it's a struggle. It's a struggle because as a mobile game, you know, Scopely is a massive company, so you have specific specific people doing rigging, animating you know, and technical artists, but with startups, you you tend to, they prefer to you to have generalists. And I wasn't really a generalist. I was very much pigeonholed into animation. That's all I knew. Uh, so after leaving, after leaving that, I am starting a new job. So uh, September, 2024, I will be working at Natural Motion on Star Wars Hunters. And I'm really excited about that. Literally today, I, I'm just onboarding and um, yeah, it's, it, it should be good. It's a good style. It seems kind of Fortnite style. It looks really good. Uh, they're trying to do a, an Unreal Engine on the mobile games to make it, to get that visually look good, which I think is really cool. Working on Unity, I think Unreal just gives that visual aspect. You know, you can see it looks, it looks really good. And it's a, it's like a shoot 'em up and i've been playing it on my phone and i'm really excited to be working there um so yeah in a nutshell that's my journey in video games and i'm teaching I, i'm enjoying teaching now more i've created you know i guess this is a time where i can plug my course in right but i've created like an online course where you can check out the webinar below in the link in the description uh just to, I, I found a lot of joy in teaching and i've been given i've been invited to a lot of universities in in uni staffordshire bournemouth Manchester Metropolitan, SAE Institute in Liverpool, uh, South End on Sea. I gave a talk at higher education there as well. And I find a lot of solace in, um, in giving back and YouTube channel, obviously this, uh, sharing my knowledge of the last 20 years and also fitness, you know, fitness has played a massive part. Health is really kind of brushed off into me being more productive. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on productivity and ha habits and uh, how that's helped. And maybe I'll do, I'm writing notes about creativity and fitness and how they both kind of work together, how it's helped me. So I'm just looking at research pictures on that. And who knows, maybe I'll do a book on that. I'd like to write something about, you know, how habits and animation and fitness are all kind of intertwined. But uh, anyway, that's not for me rambling. Uh, yeah, so, you know, that's my story so far. Uh, yeah, please like, share if you think anyone uh, would learn from this or be inspired by this video. And what can I say at the end is just, uh, you know, at the start when you graduate, you know, I speak to a lot of graduation students here. When I was giving the talks at uni, a lot of them feel a bit like they're hopeless because of AI. But AI can never take the place of you. 
right? It will never take the place of you. And uh, I'll finish with this quote from a rapper called Loki from the UK. He said, whether I'm number one, number two, or number three, I'm unique and there will never be another me and there will never be another you. Be proud of who you are. Don't copy what the others do. So, you know, you have a story. You are unique, okay? And share that story through animation, through drawing, through modeling, whatever you do, environment art, you know, that's the great thing about being an artist. So don't give up on when you don't get a job because it took me about a year. There were ups and downs. We all rise and fall on a daily basis. That's fine. That's human. That's normal. That's natural. Keep plugging away. That's what I did. I kept on working on my creativity. I kept on doing little animations every week, little breakdown animations. I mean, that's what the YouTube channel is for, right? It's, uh, it's doing these little basic animations. As students, we try and do overambitious projects, which is, which is good. It's good you're overambitious. But, you know, when I talk to a lot of my friends who are experienced animators, they say, you know, work on little tasks and really polish them. Really see them as little short films. It could be a walk, a little short. That's a short animation. A little jump is a short animation. And then slowly you put them together in your showroom and you've got polished versions of each one. And then that's what's going to get you that job in the industry and also your contacts, your networking, you know? There's, I know a lot of good people who don't get jobs because they don't have connections. And sometimes you've got to have that connection, apply for those uh, agencies, you know, graduate programs. And, you know, really it's a small industry, you know, it's massive in terms of revenue, but it's very small in terms of the people. So, you know, people know each other. So go out there. I was at the develop conference this year. And I'm, I'm probably going to start going there every year. And I should have gone there. It was, it's been going on for about 10 years. But when I was in the States, I was right next to San Diego. I used to go Comic-Con every year, three years in a row, you know. The receptionist was really cool. She would just apply for the passes for us. We would get them and go. And because you guys are in the industry or will be in the industry, you get free passes. I used to go to GDC. I used to go to E3, SIGGRAPH. You know, because I was there, I took advantage of that. Even when you look at these online schools, when I went to Animation Mentor, really, yeah, it's a school that teaches you animation. But if you look deep down, everyone posts on each other's work. And what you're trying to do in that community, you're trying to build contacts with the mentors. The mentors are all there from, you know, massive companies. So you want to try and get your name out there because that will come back, you know. So when you when you do go, if you do go on these animation courses, really try and post on other people's sites, on their workspaces, give feedback on their work. People will notice that and then they will come on your workspace and get feedback. So take the time and trouble out to really do that, you know, get involved that way. And if you can go out and meet people, go on conferences, like I said, you know, develop and SIGGRAPH and San Diego. I don't think there's SIGGRAPH anymore, but, but Comic-Con, even in the UK Comic-Con, we went, I went last year to the UK Comic-Con. I went to the one here in Manchester, you know, really put your name out there because when you meet in person, it's different. You get that different vibe. Digitally is good as well, you know, LinkedIn and what have you. But really when you meet in person, you, you, the person, ah, I remember that guy. I remember that when I went to develop, I got messages on LinkedIn saying, hey, OP, yeah, it's nice to meet you, you know, finally. So that Personal connection is really good. That's why I still go and give talks at the uni. You know, a lot of them have said, can you give it on Zoom? I said, I'd rather do it in person because afterwards they want, I notice a lot of students want to talk and there's a lot of students who have said, you know, you've given me faith that it's okay for me to carry on animating. You know, I always thought AI would, but for example, I got a job now and people are worried about AI. You know, what right now, animators are in demand you know AI animators are not in demand so you know AI has its place but that human touch that human feeling that you can put into your work only you can do that so I wouldn't worry too much about that uh, in the future we'll see but right now you know if you want to animate there's there's jobs out there you know to animate I know it's take industry took up the biggest hit this year you know with 6,500 jobs gone it's picking up you know jobs are out there uh, just keep plugging away, you know, if, if your desire is there, you keep honing on your skills. If you need to go back to school, go back to, I know plenty of professionals who go back to school, try and do advanced classes to just brush up on their work, keep practicing. You know, obviously you want the right guidance to do the right practicing. But yeah, anyway, I could ramble on, that's it for me. Uh, yeah, check the link, click the link on the description. Uh, check out the webinar, 
uh, at least if you if you like it go ahead if not completely understand man and i'm here for support always in the comments and so yeah ciao i'll go for a walk look after your health and all that good stuff and i'll see you in the next video